Throughout history, there have been many executions that took place of high-profile people. For example, during the Tudor period, three queens would lose their heads inside of the Tower of London. But many military officers throughout the years would be executed by a firing squad, and it was considered an honourable way for soldiers who had been found guilty of a military offence to go. But still today, firing squad is considered a legal execution method in some places. But in January 1961, the former Prime Minister of the Democratic Republic of the Congo would be following a military coup, imprisoned and captured, and he was then handed over to the authorities who executed him in the presence of many military officers and officials. His remains were later dug up and destroyed, but some believe that he was a martyr, and the only thing that remained of him was his gold tooth. Join us today to look at the brutal execution of Patrice Lumumba, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Patrice Lumumba was born on the 2nd of July 1925, and he would become the first Prime Minister of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. He was born in a small village named Anula, in Kauai province, in the Belgium Congo. As a young man, he was involved in the different groups that influenced his political ideas, and he would emerge as a prominent politician in the lands. He did have two big rivals who came from larger ethnic groups, but Lumumba was from a smaller one, and his group were not considered the most powerful at the time. Following his schooling, Lumumba then went to work, and he became involved in a club of Western educated Africans, and he would then, at the time, write many political essays and poems for Congolese publications. He did apply for Belgian citizenship, and he received this, and he then became a postal sorter, before he would train to become an accountant inside of the post office. But throughout his life, he continued to write for Congolese newspapers. Lumumba then, in 1955, became a regional president of a trade union of government workers, and he then also became involved in the Belgian Liberal Party, and he travelled to Belgium to visit the country that held large parts of land in the Congo. But when he got back, he was arrested, was imprisoned for a year for embezzling the post office where he worked. But following his release, he got more involved in politics. Along with other powerful politicians, Patrice Lumumba would launch the Congolese National Movement, the first national political party, and he would meet other important African leaders across the continent. His party had a voice of militant nationalism, and the Belgian government would, in December 1959, announced that they would help Congo head towards independence. But many believe this was a scam, and that the Belgians would put who they wanted in charge, and there were clashes with the authorities, and in one incident 30 people died. Lumumba was then accused of being involved in the riot, but the Congolese national movement then won a large victory in Stanleyville. The party though would not cooperate with authorities until Lumumba was released, and he was then taken to Brussels, where a national election was proposed. His party would emerge as the largest and biggest party, and he was then asked to form the first government on the 24th of June 1960. He then accepted the position of Prime Minister, and at the time many soldiers rebelled against the Belgians, and the Congo would ask the UN to step in to expel the Belgians from the lands. The UN refused to help suppress the revolt, and Lumumba then asked the Soviets for aircraft, to transport soldiers to Katanga, where a revolt was occurring. But his actions were developing alarm across the world, but then President Kasavubu would sack Lumumba, and there was a military coup as Colonel Joseph Mobutu seized control with Kasavubu. The UN would recognise this new government, and at the time Lumumbu had been placed under house arrest, and he was guarded by UN soldiers and Mobutu's men. And following the General Assembly's decision, Lumumbu would escape from house arrest, and he was then re-arrested, and was taken to a military camp. But he was at the time considered very dangerous, and he was then transferred to a military barracks to be held. He was kept alongside two of his close political allies, who had planned to help him set up a new government. The prisoners were poorly fed, and Lumumba wrote, In a word, we are living amid absolutely impossible conditions. They are against the law. But discipline at the camp where he was held went downhill and soldiers were not paid and they refused to work until they were and many supported the release of Lumumba and others thought he was very dangerous. But the conclusion was reached that holding him as a prisoner 
was considered too much of a risk. Because of this, a question as to what to do with him emerged, and Lumumba was then taken to the state of Katanga. Whilst on a flight, he was restrained, and was then on his arrival, yet again placed in house arrest, where he was brutally beaten and was tortured by officers. The president and cabinet decided what to do with him, and then his execution was ordered. Shortly after arriving, he was taken to a quiet location, where there were three firing squads had been gathered, and these were led by a Belgian officer named Julien Gart. It's believed at the time that many countries did have plans to assassinate Lumumba, and the head of the CIA would state that he wished Lumumba would fall into a river full of crocodiles. The execution was carried out by the authorities of Katanga, on the request of the president who was there to witness the proceedings. One by one, the men, including Patrice Lumumba, were lined up against a tree, then the executioners were told to ready. It was around 9.40pm in the evening, and within three minutes the three men were dead. Lumumba was forced against a tree, and then the firing squad shot quickly straight into him, and his body was then thrown into a shallow grave. The next morning the local government took the decision to then desecrate his remains, and they wanted to prevent his remains falling into enemy hands. So they dug Lumumba's body up and then dismembered the corpse, and they dissolved the remains in sulfuric acid, and the bones were then ground up and were scattered. The only part of him that remains today was a single gold tooth. It would be three weeks until the Congolese authorities confirmed the death of Lumumba. There were reports that his body was kicked after he was shot also, and that his death would be formally announced on the 13th of February 1961. He was 35 when he was shot, and following the military coup, he was imprisoned under harsh conditions. He was a man who would turn to the Soviet Union for help before this, and this brought the Americans, who were at the time locked in the Cold War, to suspect Lumumba, and the CIA had plotted at the time to assassinate him. They had drawn up plans for this, and Eisenhower, the president, had been told that Lumumba should be eliminated. The plans to assassinate him were discussed months before he died, and money was even allocated to accomplish this. But there are other governments, including the British government, who wanted to get rid of him, as it was believed he posed a serious threat to the British interests in the region, and the mines in Katanga. The head of MI5 would state, I can see only two possible solutions to the problem. The first is a simple one of ensuring Lumumba's removal from the scene by killing him. This should solve the problem. All of the accounts have led to speculation that other countries were involved in his death. There was a repatriation of the final and last remains of Lumumba, and this is mostly just a gold tooth, as there was nothing left of him. The children of Lumumba received the remains of their father in Brussels, and the Belgian Prime Minister would say, For my part, I would like to apologise here in the presence of his family for the war in which the Belgian government influenced the decision to end the life of the country's first Prime Minister. A man was murdered for his political convictions and his words and ideas. But the execution of Patrice Lumumba was a brutal and swift one, in which he met his end at a firing squad, and following this, there was little left of him. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.